Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I am your host, Isaac Longworth, and I'm so excited to talk about today's saint, Saint Jean Vianney. Now, I can really identify with Saint Jean Vianney for several different reasons, and you'll hear more about that later in the show. Uh, but I'm so excited to tell you the story of this man who shows us that no matter our humble beginnings, we can all become heroic saints like he was. Now, in 1786, Jean was born in a place called Dardilly, France. Uh, he was born to a large farming family. He was the fourth of six children, and his parents were very devout Catholics. And so Jean was raised in a very faithful Catholic home. His parents were well known for their charity work. They would go out of their way to serve uh, the poor, the hungry, the homeless in their area. Now, during this time, France was going through a real period of horrible turbulence. You see, the French Revolution was raging across the country. The French Revolution had started as a rebellion to overthrow the king and to recreate a new France, a new society, but it had quickly become a revolution against religion as well, particularly the Catholic religion, which had been in France for many years. And so the French revolutionaries were trying to turn France into an atheistic society. They were trying to kick God out of France. They wanted to build a country that was built purely on humanistic values, believing that humans are the supreme authority over society, not God, and that humans can direct themselves Whatever they want to do, they can build this utopia on earth without God. And so that's what they were trying to do in France. They were trying to completely remove Catholicism from the country. Uh, they destroyed churches. They sacked convents and chased the nuns away. They even changed the calendar so that it would get away from Sunday being a holy day of rest. Uh, they went throughout the country uh, killing priests and nuns and any Catholics who still practice their faith, trying to stamp out religion from France. If any priest were found celebrating mass or hearing confessions, they could have their heads cut off or they would load them on boats and take them out to the water and drown them. So it was a very dangerous time to be a faithful Catholic in France. And yet the Vianney family, they believed that it was important to still pray and serve God as much as they could. So they tried to practice their faith in whatever way they could, even though it was illegal to do so. So Jean growing up, uh, he received his catechism lessons, learning about the faith from two nuns who were hiding in a nearby house. Their convent had been destroyed. They had been chased away and they taught Jean all about the faith, all about who Jesus was and how to love him. And when he was 13, Jean made his first communion in a secret mass. They had a priest who was working in the underground church come to their house. They blacked out the windows so that none of the neighbors could see what was going on. And Jean made his first communion in this secret mass. And as Jean was looking up to these priests, bringing the sacraments to people, hiding and running from house to house, trying to escape the revolutionaries, he looked up to them as a kind of hero. And they really inspired him to want to become a priest himself. This is one of the reasons why I so identify with Jean Vianney, because uh, I'm a seminarian myself, uh, and my call to the priesthood really came from looking up to priests as heroes. I saw them as heroes, and I wanted to be like them. And so I wanted to become a priest like they were. And so Jean Vianney, seeing these heroic priests, wanted to become a priest himself. And so eventually when the revolution ended and some amount of religious freedom had returned back to France, Jean decided to pursue this vocation to the priesthood and he went to a local school that was run by a priest for training. But there was a problem because in school, Jean was not doing well. Uh, he was not very smart. He had not been able to do a lot of schooling during the revolution. And so he was really struggling with the classes, struggling with getting good grades. His teachers were frustrated because he could not get the material down. He especially struggled 
with Latin. Now it was important for priests to learn Latin back then because all of the prayers of the mass, their whole ministry was done in the Latin language. And so Jean had to learn Latin in order to be a priest, but he was struggling with it. He was not good at it and he did not like it. Now, this is another reason why I can identify with poor Jean Vianney, uh, because I have had to also take six semesters of Latin as I'm studying to become a priest, and I also cannot stand learning Latin. Uh, I'm really bad at it. It does not come naturally to me. And so there was a big struggle in school, the stress of exams. And uh, sometimes I would pray to St. Jean Vianney because I know that he could feel my pain because neither of us were very good at Latin. And yet we had to learn it in order to pursue our vocation. So I love St. Jean Vianney for that reason as well. Uh, but uh, even though France was no longer in a state of revolution while Jean was in school, France was still at war because uh, Napoleon Bonaparte had risen to the leadership of France and under his leadership, France was in a war with most of the other countries of Europe and even was campaigning in Africa. And so there was a huge need for French troops. And so Napoleon lifted the exemption that existed in France that those who were studying for religious life could not be forced to go to war. But Napoleon lifted that, which meant that Jean and his fellow seminarians were forced to enlist in the French army. Now, this was very difficult for Jean, not only because it was putting his own vocation on hold, but because Napoleon, who was leading France at this time, was a terrible tyrant. He was very anti-Catholic. In fact, he had fought with the Pope. He had kidnapped the Pope at one point. He was always threatening him, and he wanted total power over France, including total power over the church in France. And yet Jean, even though he disagreed with Napoleon's uh, theories and philosophy, Jean had no choice and he was forced to enlist. Now, shortly after enlisting, uh, he became actually very sick and he had to be hospitalized. So he uh, was left behind while the rest of his troop went on without him while he recovered from his illness. But when he recovered, he saw his opportunity. His troop had left without him and he ran away and deserted from the army. He would not serve under Napoleon. He wanted to hide. And so he hid for over a year using a different name. Sometimes he had to hide himself when authorities were looking to find deserters. One of his favorite places to hide was in a barn. He would hide under sacks of fermenting hay that were becoming silage. And he hid there until eventually a pardon was granted to all deserters. And Jean was finally able to leave the army legally and go to seminary. But in seminary, he continued to struggle with his studies, including Latin. He failed several exams. He was getting really discouraged and actually thinking about giving up. But he had a close friend who was a priest who encouraged him, who told him, you know, Jean, don't give up. God is calling you to be a priest, even though you're struggling with Latin push through. And this friend, this advocate, also defended him in front of his teachers. Some of his teachers didn't think that Jean was smart enough to become a priest, and they were leery about letting him go onward. But his benefactor kept pointing out the holiness of life that Jean exemplified, and how even though he wasn't good at Latin and struggled academically, he had a lot of common sense that would help him in his priesthood. And so Jean persevered, and he was eventually ordained a priest. Now, shortly after he was ordained, Jean was assigned to be the curé, which was the French word for the pastor or the parish priest of a church in the tiny town of Ars. And this is where he would spend his priesthood. Now, Ars was a very small French town. There was only about 300 residents in the town. In fact, uh, the town was so small that when Jean was trying to find where it was, he got lost on the way. But when he actually found ours, he knelt down and kissed the ground because he humbly accepted this tiny little town that he would labor in for the rest of his priesthood. Now, when he got to ours, he realized that he had his work cut out for him. The residents of ours were really unconcerned with their faith. They didn't care about following the 
precepts of the faith. They didn't care about going to mass. Remember, they had gone through years of secularization by the revolution, by the French government under Napoleon. And so the people largely did not go to mass. They would work on Sundays instead. They also spent their weekends going to taverns and getting drunk rather than doing anything having to do with their faith. Uh, they were known for having these wild parties and dances where the men and women at times acted in ways indistinguishable from being in a common brothel. It was a very uh, lustful scene. And as a result of that, many illegitimate children had been fathered in ours during these dances, during these cabarets, and they were left on their own. And so it was a real tough situation that Jean came into. And so when he realized how difficult this assignment was going to be, Jean began to fast for the people of ours. He began to fast. He began to give up food. He began to give up comfort in order to make himself suffer more. And that suffering, he would unite with the suffering that Jesus had suffered on the cross in order to make it available, the grace available for his people to have a conversion. So he offered up all of these sufferings for his people. Uh, Jean would often sleep on the floor. He would uh, get out of bed and sleep on the floor in order to make his life more difficult. In fact, uh, he rarely got more than three hours of sleep a night anyways, and many of these would be spent on the floor. Uh, he took on extreme fasting. His diet was so intense that people often wondered when they saw what he ate, how he was able to stay alive. For many years, he ate only bread and potatoes and not enough of either of them. For many years, that's all he ate with some water, sometimes a pinch of flour. He would just take a handful of flour and eat that. That's all he ate in order to unite his suffering, his hunger, his exhaustion to the suffering of Jesus for the sake of his people. Jean also began preaching in the church with great passion about the love of God, trying to tell the people just how much God loved them. He told them about the necessity of Jesus, how Jesus had come to save their souls from the punishment of hell, that they needed to turn away from their sin and come back to God. Now, Jean's style, it wasn't very erudite. It wasn't very academic. He was very simple. He used images of farm life. He told stories, but his homilies were very heartfelt. His concern for them came through so obviously as he was preaching that people began to listen. Slowly but surely, people began to have conversions. One at a time, they started coming back to church. Their life began to be changed by Jesus, and God became their priority because Jean was bringing them to conversion. They stopped working on Sundays and they started coming back to Mass. They stopped going to the taverns to drink and they stopped going to the cabarets for their drunken revelries and dances. Even though Jean had had a humble beginning, this farm boy with difficulty in school, he had been sent to this backwater town to this seemingly hopeless case, little by little, he was having an effect due to to his heroic efforts. He was winning the town of ours back for Jesus. Now, Jean went above and beyond that. He helped establish an orphanage that cared for all of the children that had been abandoned because they were conceived out of wedlock from the cabarets and the dances. Everywhere Jean went, he loved people. He cared for them. He visited with them. He was always pointing them back to Jesus, no matter what he did, encouraging them to come back to church. Now news of this saintly priest, it began to spread and people began to come from nearby towns and cities, eventually coming from even outside of France to come and see this man. People sought him out, especially for confession. Jean was famous for being an excellent confessor. On many days, he would spend between 11 and 16 hours a day in the confessional, hearing confessions. Over 20,000 people were coming to ours every year to speak with him, to try and get into his confession line. And one of the reasons why Jean was so good at confession is because he gave solid, practical advice that really helped people to leave their sin behind. 
He didn't just absolve them of their sins and tell them to get out. He gave them good advice that helped them to actually change their lives around. John also had something called the gift of knowledge, which is where God is able to give supernatural knowledge about people, about situations that John could not have known on his own. And this gift of knowledge would be used often in the confessional because uh, people would come in and they would forget their sins or they would forget how long they had been in confession. They would try and hide things from Jean, but God would reveal how long they'd been away. He'd reveal what sins they had committed to Jean and he was able to bring that up with them and help them to experience the Lord's mercy through this gift. He was able to know things about people that he could never have known by himself. And as they experienced this gift coming through Jean, they realized that God was real and they turned their lives around and came back to Jesus. Jean also became famous for working many healings and other miracles. Uh, he in fact was working so many healings at one point, just praying simple prayers with people that one day when he healed a girl of blindness, there was a crowd of visitors to ours who saw him heal this girl of blindness and they were so excited. They were making this big fuss. They ran to the mayor and told him about what Jean Vianney had done. And the, the mayor was rather used to it at this point. He dismissed them and he said, oh, our holy curé, he performs many such miracles. It was like the people of ours had gotten used to the miraculous because Jean Vianney was their curé, because he was their priest. Uh, at one point, his orphanage had ran out of food. They didn't have enough food to feed the orphans. And so they came to Jean Vianney and told him about the problem. He knelt down and said a quick prayer and then directed them to go back to the storeroom and check. And when they tried to go to the storage room where they kept the food, they tried to open the door, but it was stuck. They couldn't get it open. And when they finally were able to pry it open, they realized that the door was so jammed because the room had been filled with corn. It was spilling out as they opened the door. It had been jammed shut and the corn had appeared miraculously because Jean had prayed that God would help him feed his hungry orphans. So these miraculous things were happening all around him. And Jean was so loved by everyone in the town. In fact, everyone who met him his obvious love for them, his desire for them to come to Jesus came through so clearly as he was hearing confession, as he was praying for healing, as he was giving advice and preaching and starting orphanages. Everything he did, all of these heroic things he did, was done out of love for God and love for his people. But unfortunately, not everyone loved him the same way. There was, in fact, some priests who were jealous that people from their church were talking about how holy Jean Vianney was, and so they wanted to get rid of him. And so they actually started a petition to the bishop to get Jean Vianney removed. They told the bishop that he was really bad at getting good grades in seminary, that he wasn't very smart, and that he was probably dangerous to be a priest because he wasn't smart enough to be one. And they passed this petition around to other priests behind his back. But Jean Vianney found the petition. He learned that it was happening. But because he was so humble, Jean Vianney thought to himself, maybe I'm not smart enough to be a priest. Maybe I'm not intelligent enough. And he signed his own name on the petition to the bishop to have him removed. But the bishop saw through the jealousy of the priests, he saw that Jean was truly a humble and holy man, and he continued to have him serve in ours. There was also corrupt businessmen who had thrived off of the fact that the poor people would work on Sundays in order to make them more money. And since the people had gone back to church, they were losing money. And so they too tried to get the bishop to remove Jean Vianney from the parish. Even the devil attacked him because he saw the effect that he was having on the town. And so Jean Vianney would often suffer attacks in various different ways from the devil. At night, when Jean Vianney was trying to sleep for the few hours that he could, he would hear this creepy, demonic singing through the house. The devil would audibly threaten and mock and shout at him. At one point, Jean was dragged from his bed 
The devil once set his room on fire. And so John was always under attack from the devil, but he was never afraid of him. Because whenever the devil was attacking him, John would simply make the sign of the cross. And as soon as he did that, the devil would flee, would run away. And this is something that we can ourselves do when we are under attack from the enemy. We can make the sign of the cross over ourselves to remind Satan of the defeat that he suffered at the cross and the fact that we belong to Jesus now. Now, the biggest attack that the devil had for Jean was not these exterior physical attacks, but was rather the inner psychological temptations that he sent him. At four different times, when Jean was at his weakest, the devil tempted him to leave his parish at ours behind. The first time, it was because Jean was discouraged at the lack of response in ours. He thought he wasn't bearing any fruit, and he was tempted to leave. The second time was when Jean fell sick from pneumonia, and he was suffering these head-splitting migraines. And when he was weak and ill, the devil again tempted him to leave ours behind. The third time, Jean was suffering from false humility. These crowds were following him. They were asking for prayers. And the devil was tempting him that it was a source of pride and that it would be better for everyone if Jean left. And the fourth and final time was Jean was just tired of all of the ministry he was doing. He had this desire to go and be a quiet monk somewhere and pray and spend the rest of his life in solitude and just not work anymore. And in all of these situations, the devil tempted him to go away from where God had sent him. But Jean always resisted, even when he was weak. He acknowledged that he was weak, that he was humble, that he was lowly, and yet he trusted in God in all of these situations to stay put and to keep working where God had set him. Now, one day, Jean returned to the rectory. He returned back to his house. After a long day of 17 hours of confession, he was exhausted and he actually collapsed. And so he was put to bed. They found out that he was gravely sick. And for three whole days, his church was full of people praying around the clock that he would recover. But he did not recover. He continued to worsen. And he eventually received the last sacraments. He was on the cusp of death. And he shed tears of love the entire time he was receiving the Eucharist because he knew he was going home to Jesus. And so he blessed his parish one last time from his deathbed and then died at the age of 73. Now, I think one of the main lessons that we can learn from the life of the holy Saint Jean Vianney is that God can use the most unlikely people in the most unlikely of situations to do amazing things. As long as you remain humble, God can make you into a heroic saint like he was. I mean, look at Jean Vianney. He was a simple farm boy. He struggled with school. He was often sick and weak and exhausted. He was sent to this small town in the middle of nowhere. It seemed like a hopeless case because he was working in the middle of a secular society. But in all of this, he bore amazing fruit for God. In all of this, he became a great saint. Well, what is it that is limiting you from becoming a saint? Do you think that you're not smart enough? Do you think that you have too low of a social status? Do you think that you can't become a saint because of your troubled past or the fact that you're not gifted enough? Think of Jean Vianney. Think of what he had to get through in order to become the great saint that he was. Maybe God has placed you in a situation that seems impossible. Maybe your family or your workplace or your friend group or your church or your city. It seems like nothing good can happen there. And yet, like Jean Vianney being sent to the small town of ours, God has placed you in your context where you are for a reason. If you are humble, like Jean was, if you rely on God, he can make you into a great saint despite your humble beginnings. So let's pray for that grace now as we ask for St. Jean Vianney's intercession. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Jean Vianney, you were willing to sacrifice your time and your energy to lead others to Jesus. You even went so far as to take on extra suffering, extra fasting for their sake. Help us to do the same. You had the strength to fight off Satan's attack. Teach us how to reject the evil one, especially in the hidden temptations that are so easy to miss. We are called to be saints like you were, St. Jean Vianney, in spite of your limitations and your weaknesses, because you were called to be a saint because it was Jesus working through you. Help us to become saints like you were. St. Jean Vianney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.